Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to build a project management app on Flutterflow, where a member has access to projects they're part of, where they can dive deeper into it and see the milestones and tasks. They can add milestones and with due dates and details. In addition, members can also add tasks where tasks can be assigned to different team members with a due date for specific milestones. Finally, for the admin, they can edit by adding or removing project team members. So only team members can have access to specific projects they are part of. So let's get started on Flutterflow. So let's get started. I've already connected to Firebase. Um, there are a lot of videos and documentation out there that walks through the process. And I've definitely covered it in one of my previous videos. So check those out. So we don't need to spend too much time on setting up Firebase. So the first thing we want to do is um, enable authentication. This allows the user to create an account. Um, so in order to do this, I've basically taken a template um, that's existing from the authentication templates available. And then I've added an extra field called full name. And on the action, we want to create the account um, and fill in the respective name and password fields. And then for the display name, we want to grab it from this full name widget that we just created. Similarly for login, we want to just simply use login, um, email and password based off the widgets. And then let's go back and let's go to the project page. So I've taken a template off Flutterflow, which will restructure later on to consider all the projects. Let's also quickly create a profile page. Um, so this will allow the user to uh, see the profile and sign out. Um, so let's just quickly change this to authenticated users display name, delete the balance, keep the logout button. It's great. Just delete all these other um, irrelevant widgets. Uh, let's just, let's also delete the image for now. So it'll be a simple logout button, which we can access. And let's turn on nav bar. Um, change the icon quickly. Let's call it, uh, maybe, maybe a calendar will look fine. Oh, maybe like this. Okay. Like a project of some sort. Great. Let's quickly test the authentication uh, to see if this works. So let's quickly enter our name uh, to get started. Great, it loaded the projects page and we can see our profiles here, which we can log out. And then let's check out Firebase. So let's refresh the database. And then here we can see the user has been created. Perfect. Let's um, log out and log back in to make sure the login function works. Okay, cool. Yep. The login function also works. Perfect. So before we go further, I'd like to walk you through the architecture of what I'm thinking. So the first level, the highest level architecture is the projects collection. And within there is going to be a title, a goal and a final due date and a project creator who, who is ultimately the owner and of who is creating the project. This owner would have administrative um, access, allowing the user to add and remove users access, to, other users access to a project. And then within project, we're going to have a list of users as well. Within the projects, there'll be plans. So think of it as milestones. Um, for example, milestone title, a milestone detail, and a due date. And then within plans, we also need to refer back to projects document reference. What plans are related to what projects? And then within plans or milestones, there'll be tasks. For example, the task title, task detail, whether it's completed, the due date, 
and then we're going to have reference to the plans document reference and the project so we know what task is related to what plans and what project in addition we're going to have a task assignee this is who will be doing the task and then in the lit user collection we're going to have you know the default properties in addition to the list of projects they have access to now that's pretty clear we need to create these um, properties and collection within Flutterflow. So let's, let's jump back to Flutterflow. And the first thing we need is, um, so the first we need is to add these collections. So firstly, let's add the projects collection and we're going to have a title. It's going to be of string of a goal. It's going to be of string uh, due date. It's going to be a date time and then project creator. It's going to be a document reference of users. And then it's going to be a list of um, users. So let's say, um, let's call it project people, project team. And it's going to be document, document reference of users and it's a list of users. Great. Now, next step, we're going to have the plans collection. So let's go to plans. And then we're going to collect, uh, create a title. It's going to be details of the plan. And there's going to be a due date for each of these milestones. And then we're going to have, you know, the project reference. So what is the, what is this plan to which project is this plan related to? Cool. The reason why I'm using this is of sub collections because follow flow only allows two levels. Um, so there can't be three levels where it's like projects, there's a sub collection of plans and then a sub collection of tasks. So, which is why I've decided to create separate collections uh, for each of these uh, collections. So for task, let's keep going. So for task collection, we're gonna have task title. Let's call it task title. Let's call it task detail. String, we'll call it a completed flag or Boolean. Uh, due date and then we're going to have a project ref a document reference project and then we're going to have a plans plan ref of document reference plans and then lastly we're going to have a task assignee of document reference users lovely now within users we want to update this to include a list of projects so we can do this and in projects document reference projects and it's going to be a list perfect so this matches the original architecture i propose uh, it may change as we develop the app but this will be a good starting point so the first thing we need to do is edit the projects page. So let's quickly change the title to projects, delete that. And here we can, we'll need to delete the other containers that we don't need because when we create the list view, it will generate them for us. Uh, we'll also delete the image because that's not necessary. Let's add the information of the projects. So what we need to do is go to the column and then add a backend query. Query collection of projects, confirm. And then we'll add for the name, we'll just go projects document title. Similarly, projects document 
gulps for the detail and the due date as well. Projects document due date. We'll format the date time to October to month, date and year. Let's quickly edit the backend query to only show projects um, that the team member, that the authenticator user is part of. So we we'll do a filter for pro in projects team, array contains authenticator users reference. So what we want to do next is add a floating action bar, a floating action button, which allows a user to add project information. So click customize the color and add an icon, a plus icon. And then we'll also quickly change the color to white for the icon. So we want to show like a bottom sheet that allows the user to enter information such as the title, goal and due date. So let's create a new component. Um, let's search for a existing component that we can use. So let's create, let's use this one. Let's call it create project. And here we can see it contains majority of the information that we need. So let's remove some unnecessary information such as the photo. Let's quickly change this to the project goal description, delete the URL. And let's edit this to show create project. Um, we can see here that the bottom sheet has been dismissed by the X, which is good. And let's resize it quickly. Let's um, also downsize the, the project name's input title. Okay, next we want to add a calendar that allows the user to select a due date. So let's drag this up quickly. And let's change the calendar to to a weekly view, starting on Monday. And let's reduce the size of the month a little. and set the current date to be, you know, the start date of the calendar when it first pop up. And let's quickly add a title for the calendar. We'll simply write add due date or project due date. Now let's create the action for the create project. So what we need to do is create document and the collection we want to create is projects. Um, we we'll add all these fields. So the title is from the widget state. The widget state of the project name. Similarly, the goal is also going to be from the widget state of the goal, due date is going to be the widget state of the calendar and it's going to be the start date and the project creator is going to be the, the logged in user, the authenticator user and we need to add the first team member of the team which will be authenticated user because that person is the first member and the creator of the team. Next, we also need to update the document the user's document because if, we, if you recall in the user's document, there is a list of projects. And in order to update, um, in order to add the list of projects, you need to firstly,
you need to firstly output the newly created project. So here we'll go back to back and call update projects field. And then the action output is going to be the reference from the initial backend call of creating the project itself. And next we'll dismiss the bottom sheet. What we need to do is also add in the action that shows the bottom sheet when the fab is being clicked. So show, um, we're going to show the component of create project and no need to set the height. Um, we don't also don't need to set the color, the background color. Cool. Let's quickly test this and see if it works. Now let's add a project. We'll just add a project name first called project one, project one's goal as the description and then we set a due date sometime in the future say 12th of november press create project cool now you can see here the project has been created as shown on the front end we can also hear the see the back end has also been created where this user now has a project linked to it and let me quickly refresh this now the project's collection also has a document of the new project with all the relevant information and the project team, which currently consists of only the creator. This concludes part one of the tutorial. Remember to follow to stay updated for part two.